We know there's a lot of creative types out there, so today I want to show you how you can embellish your own mini book journal album using precious metal colour paints, rubber stamps and distress inks. What I'm using today is an American Crafts modern album. It actually comes with a fabric spine, but a blank chipboard cover. So our little project today, we're going to actually decorate this cover. So to start with, I need some cut and dry foam. Now this is actually sold in a large piece like this. It has a white foam bottom and a quite like a little bit harder black top. So we don't need it obviously to be this large. So I'm going to cut down a little piece here. So you just use any sort of craft scissors and just cut off a little piece that you need. So I'm using this now with precious metal colour. Now this is a metallic acrylic paint. I'm using it on the chipboard book, but it also does go on lots of different other surfaces like glass, metal, acrylic, paper, you name it, it basically goes on there. So to mix up the metallic, you just need to give a little bit of a shake. So shake that one up and then, it's quite tight on this one. And then you just need to pour a little bit on your cut and dry. Now we're using the white side of the cut and dry because that is the foam side. The black side is basically just for you to hold on to. So we're just going to get our chipboard cover out. And it's a larger surface, so this is why I've cut out, you know, quite a large piece of um, cut and dry. And you just keep going back to your paint pot. Now because this paint does adhere quite well also to fabric, if you don't want to actually get any paint on your fabric piece, you might want to cover that first up with a um, bit of masking tape or just some other um, paper just to make sure that's masked off there. Okay, so I've done my first layer here of the blue precious metal colour. What I want to do now is just add a little bit of bronze over the top. So just giving that a little bit of a shake. Now if you wanted to cut out a new piece of cut and dry you could, but because we're actually going over the blue anyway, let's peel that little um, bit off there. Because we're going over the blue anyway you can still use the same piece, it'll just continue to add blue if there's still some left on the uh, cut and dry. Always try and get the most out of your cut and dry foam. So I'm not going over the entire piece here now. I'm just going to gently highlight certain parts. It just gives a nice little um, streaky sort of added look. Now you could play with this as much as you like. If you wanted to just do two colours, then by all means just use you know blue and bronze or purple and pink or green and you know silver or any sort of colours that you know you prefer. Um, and you don't need to limit yourself to two colours. Obviously with 28 different precious metal colours in the range you can do as much or as little as you like. What I'm going to do now is use the rubber stamps to finish off the actual part on the front. So what I'm using is a Darkroom Door photo stamps. Now Darkroom Door actually have mm, probably over 20 photo stamps now in a whole range of different subject matter. So there's always, you know, usually something that would suit your mini album. There's trees if you want like to do a family tree album. Uh, there's travel related themes, which is the one that I'm actually using today. I'm using the Venetian gondolas so I can create a mini book about all of my travels all around Europe. So I've just put the uh, rubber stamp onto an acrylic block. Now I'm inking it up with an archival jet black ink. And archival inks are an oil based ink, so that means they're waterproof and uh, they also retain all of the detail in these photo stamps. Because Darkroom Door photo stamps are very, very detailed because they are um, made from photos. So I'm inking it up, as you can see, I'm stamping on top and the reason I'm doing this is so I can see that the entire stamp is inked properly. One of the things you need to um, be aware of when you're using photo stamps is that you do have enough ink on the stamp. So then I'm just going to press down here. Now you just need to press firmly. You don't need to rock the stamp in any way. Just press it firmly, make sure that all of the um, parts of the stamp are in contact with the paper. 
So what I'm doing is I've got a couple of ink blending tools and a few different colours of distress ink and I'm now going to colour up my little stamped image. So the ink blending tools actually um, you put little pieces of blending foam on the base of them and starting from the outside of the image just going in a circular motion it'll just transfer the ink onto your stamped image like this. Now I've got um, a couple of different um, ink blending tools here but um, you can always just use the one ink blending tool and then just change your foam according to what ink colour you're using at the time. So I'm just sponging here. Now it's always best just to remember that you do start from the outside and not put the um, foam right in the centre of the stamp otherwise you will uh, likely to get a rectangle piece of ink and it won't blend in as nice as if you started from the edge. So that's just a little bit of weathered wood and then next up I'm just going to do a little bit of frayed burlap. Frayed burlap's like a, a lighty sort of a brown colour and this is just giving this little image a nice little vintage look. So once you've coloured in your stamped image what I'm going to do now is layer it up so we're ready to put it onto our album cover. Um, one product that I love using is the Tim Holtz Glassine Paper. It comes in a paper pad just like this, lots of different sheets in there. And so we're just taking a sheet out and I'm just going to crumple it up. It's always a lot of fun doing stuff like this. So crumpling up the little Glassine Paper, whoops, and you'll see that when, when you flatten that back out, it's just given that paper a whole lot of texture and fun. So now what we're doing, even more fun, just rip apart. And you just need to tear it down so that it covers or just gives you a little bit of a border on your photo stamp. So you don't have to be very accurate with this. Just tear away. Now because the glassine paper is it's like a, um, a coated surface, it's like wax paper. So I've found that it doesn't actually adhere very well just with double sided tape onto the chipboard book that I'm doing. So what I'm going to use is some brads in all four corners um, and also a piece of paper on the back as well. So we're going to have our stamped image on the front and then another piece of cardstock the same size on the back. And so we'll put our brads all the way through in each corner so then it does stick all the pieces together and then what we're doing is adhering paper to the actual album cover, not the glassine paper, if that makes sense. So I've done a little piece here, nearly ready to go. I've put three brads in there already. So once I've got my three layers, so you can see here we've got the stamped image, the coloured stamped image, the glassine paper, and then our extra piece of just plain white cardstock for the bottom. So those three pieces, we're just using a paper piercer, poke a little hole through there. Now I'm just using a little antique copper brads. They tend to be one of my favourite colour brads. Stick that through there, flip that over, and then you can just separate the pins on the back. And then now you have your finished stamp piece ready to go on your cover. So to actually stick it to the cover, I'm using a very large piece of foam adhesive. So all we're doing now is just peeling that off and then we'll grab our little album cover here and then stick it to the front just like that. So on this album here you can see here I've added a chipboard title which I've also coloured with the precious metal colour paints and I've added some extra stamping embellishments here as well. I hope you enjoy this project. Keep watching the show each week as we continue to share exciting new projects. Yeah.